Hi guys, and welcome to this episode of the Comedy Defect Podcast. Before we get started, here's a few dates for you to absorb if you want to come see me do my new stand-up show by the power of Grayskull. The first date is on the 6th of April, and that is in Sri Lanka, Colombo. Don't worry if you can't make that one, there are some UK dates coming up as well. The 13th to the 19th of May, and that is in the Brighton Fringe. There are various times for that show, and that is in the Temple. So check out on the Brighton Fringe website to see the differing times of that. So for the 13th to the 19th of May. The 1st to the 4th of June, and I'll be in Kilkenny Cat's Laughs. I'll be doing various spots around the place there. On the 29th of June, I'll be at Shaston Fringe, and my spot is at 10.30 for 60 minutes. I'll begin doing my new show by the power of Grayskull. And last but not least for this date entry will be Edinburgh. It will start on the 2nd of August at 2.45 in the Three Sisters, the Wee Room. Now, there are various days throughout the festival, so go and check the Fringe programme for that. If you want to come see me live, go check those out there. If you want to follow this podcast on Twitter, you can find us there at The Comedy Defect. If you want to follow me, it's at Winter Phonander. And if you want to come see my live stand-up gig dates, they'll be on my website, which is winterphonander.com. I'm also stripping as many jokes out of that Guinness Encyclopedia and putting them up on Twitter as quickly as I can. I'm nearly on page 200, so I'm doing okay, guys. I'm getting through it. I'm putting them up on Twitter under the handle at Guinness Jokes. Go check them out there. Go share them, retweet them, whatever you want to do. If you want to donate to this podcast, why not? Just go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect Podcast, and donate as little or as much as you feel this podcast is worth. And those of you that do donate, thanks a lot. Those of you that don't, that's all right, don't worry about it. Just give us a nice, decent review on iTunes or Podbean, because that helps. It really does. It tells us people where we are and what we're doing. This is a great episode with a really good friend of mine. He started roughly the same time as me, and I saw him absolutely smash the Comedy Store Gong Show one night. And he is doing really well for himself. We do go off comedy for the first half an hour of this episode, but that's okay. Look, I'll just like to follow this where it's going to go. I hope you enjoy it. This is Trevor Takabi, very funny guy. He's writing his first fringe show, which is called Great Story Bro. Go check him out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Go find him on YouTube. I say go see him live because that's where he's best. This is a great conversation for episode 59 with a very funny, very honest Trevor Takabi. So, but it, no man, it's like obviously getting married. It's great, man. Yeah, you know, I love it. I do love it. It's, it's just, uh, if you find the right person, yeah, you know, man. it's great. If that's you, it. if you haven't found the right person, oh, I guess it's a nightmare. <laughs> you know? That's what it that's is. That's it. You, you got to find a lot. You got to go through yeah. a lot of them. You know. I oh, think yeah, yeah. There's more. There's plenty. Mm. You know, you just go. Yeah. It's, it's like guess, guess who? Yeah, it? it's a weird one. Like <laughs> I've been on three dates now like, recently yeah. with three different women. Yeah. Right. Well, four. One of them I'm dismissing because that was a horrible date, right? Oh, right. Like, okay, I'll tell you what happened for you to figure out why it was horrible. Not to figure out, but to get <laughs> why, from my point of view, it was horrible. Yeah. So this was before New Year's Eve. I invited this girl out. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, we tried on Tinder. She was like, yeah. Is that on? Yeah, yeah, it's on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We can go I'm, whenever you I'm want. I'm not sure I want that story out there, but, uh, but <laughs> you know, we can cut everything out. So, yeah. basically, they invited her out. We chatted on Tinder, yeah. invited her out. She was like, cool. It was a quick thing done within 24 hours. Like, we matched and we started chatting. And mm-hmm. I was free the next day. I said, she was free. She was like, yeah. I was like, all right, do you want to meet up? Blah, blah. So, we, we agreed to meet in Camden around 11 o'clock, just send her a message, to, you know, to say hello, what's going on, and she never replied to that text, right? By 2 o'clock, she still hadn't replied, and we were meant to meet up around mm-hmm. 4 or 5, so I'm just like, okay, this is not happening, it's cool, I just got on with my business, whatever. Like, I didn't text her for a couple of days, right? And then out of the blue, she texted me, and she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I was really tired that day, I had a long day at work and I spent the whole day in bed sleeping. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. She sent me another text, <laughs> like, one thing I've learned right. when it comes to women, I mean, you, you're not dating, but I'm dating, but sure, one sure. thing I've learned is just not to care. You can care too much, you know what I mean? You can care. As mm-hmm. soon as you start caring and showing mm-hmm. emotions or whatever, it makes you vulnerable and it gives them the upper hand. Even if you are... <laughs> 
Like, I'm, you know, it's not totally. a game of, you know, it's not totally. a game of wanting to have your upper hand, but I'm just saying, as a man, you're the one who is doing all the asking and stuff yeah, like that, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. If somebody is not going to at least respect you from the beginning, don't entertain that. Then she sent me another text that because when she apologized, I don't know if she thought I was going to ask her out again or whatever, but I was happy just to talk to her without asking her out. It's yeah, like, exactly. mate, I already asked you out. You did a no show with some bullshit excuses about you sleeping throughout the day. Fine, fair enough. Yeah. But I'm not asking you out again. So she then asked if I wanted to meet. On New Year's Day. Mm. Okay, it's kind of cool, but what time? So she's like, I've got this thing booked so we can meet at the Novotel Hotel in Canary Wharf, right? And as soon as I heard <laughs> hotel, I'm like, bro, this is happening. Like, this is going all the way, yeah. 100%, lunch, sex, yeah. bang. That's yeah. the way you want to start your New Year, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's how I was thinking. Uh, yeah. Like, of all the places in London, why would you want to have lunch there, mm-hmm. you know? And she was like, oh, no, you know, she she's booked, like, a massage therapy thing going on. But I just thought, well, you know, you don't have to see me on that particular day, you know? So in my mind, it's happening. All I have to do is show up, not be a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, totally. and after, the, after lunch, it's happening, right? Yeah, right. And she, someone else is going to massage her as well, so she'll be relaxed and, like, yeah, you, know, you know, that's it. <laughs> so I got there on time and stuff. We sat down, we started chatting. Things were going okay, kind mm-hmm. of thing. It was just okay. I wasn't into her like that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was, you know, she was a nice lady, but I just wasn't attracted to her yeah. like that. And we're chatting, chatting, chatting. Man, the waitress come to take our orders. She take our orders, blah, blah. She comes back, there's a few things missing. She comes back. And this girl start chatting to the waitress. I mean, chatting like they know each other. Chatting. Okay. Not chatting like, oh, excuse me. No, I mean, mm. she started by asking things, and then it's been like a good five minutes, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm just looking at the waitress like, what the fuck is going on? Mm. Like, yeah. you out here on a date, you know, yeah. what are you trying to do anyway? Turns out that all this thing was going on is that they work for the same company. Right. So she doesn't work for this particular hotel, but okay. she works... As part of the, the company, group. yeah, yeah the chamber group in another yeah. business and whatever. And she was asking this girl a bunch of things about the sales and this and that. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking to myself, you fucking dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. you out on a day and then you're trying to show off that you work for this corporation and you're talking to this girl about sales or whatever mm-hmm. instead of enjoying your day. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what point you're trying to prove right there, but... Straight yeah. away, that annoyed me. Like, now you put that on top of the fact that I wasn't into her personality-wise, that weren't great. I just thought, you know what, she's an arrogant. She <laughs> totally. Think, you know, she thinks she's all that inviting me to this four-star hotel to have lunch. Like, what the fuck is wrong with Starbucks or Costa? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just met you, mate. Like, yeah. So I went along with it. We had our lunch. We stayed there for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Did you pay for lunch, though? So, we're talking, <laughs> yeah, right. we're talking, we, like, the conversation was going, but up to this point, uh. my esteem for her had gone down, like, you know, so you meet people, I don't know, like, get for guys, it's different, right? Mm-hmm. But the physical attraction is important, both Absolutely. men and women. When it's not instant, mm-hmm. you know, you're kind of banking on their personality, yeah. have a funny, things like that, you know, like... Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm an adult now. I'm not a 20 year old going to be like, oh yeah, you know, she's not physically, she's not my type. Therefore, yeah, right. you know what I mean. When we look at the personality aspect, she weren't doing great. So while we were talking, oh. I threw her a curveball, right. and I was like, oh, you know, I've never been into a four star hotel. Like, what is your room like? You know, could you tell me? I I really want to see what your room is like. You know, just. To <laughs> 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 no, you're just like, you're like, you know what? I'm here. I'm not so chancy. Yeah, right? I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, she's pissed me off. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. So we can do you work know, this out. We can work this out. <laughs> as long as we get to see your room, we can work this out. You yeah, know, right. Aziz and Zari yeah. take some notes. Um, that's how you stay away from sexual assault, you know? <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, like, I, I want to see your room. I've never been to a five, four star hotel, yeah. like, you know. I just want to see what it's like. And mm-hmm. she just went like, we have to pay the bill first. She said it in a manner that completely threw me off. Not like if she was worried, but that was not in tone with 
that whole two hour conversation where we'll be sitting there. But at the time, I didn't know why why she spoke like that out of turn. Like she didn't entertain the idea of me seeing her. She just cut that conversation short by saying, we have to pay the bill first. Kind of like just switching the topic of the conversation. I mean, I went along with it, like just talking, whatever. It's nearly two hours here, we've been chatting, whatever, like, you know, if it ain't gonna happen, it ain't gonna happen, whatever. Yeah, right. So, COVID questions like, yeah, can we have a bill? This four-star hotel now tells me, if I want to pay the bill, I need to get up and go to the till, which I found odd, because most places have those, um, have uh, the debit, the, the automatic wireless, wireless thing. <laughs> Like in my life, straight away, I'm like, why are you not bringing this here? Why do I have to go up there? Mm. And I just like, okay, whatever, man. I just want to get out of this place. It's shit. These people are just fucking mm. arrogant. I don't like this mm. girl. She's got an attitude. She thinks she's better than she actually is. You know what I mean? Like, mm. it was, Lots yeah. Of I was, yeah, I was, yeah. yeah. So then I get to it here. And the bill basically was 50 quid. And I took the bill. And I went to the till. And the girl sort of got up and started looking into her purse. Like she was looking for her bank card or whatever to come and pay. So I'm at the till waiting for them to draw up the bill or whatever. And she's still sitting there, still looking into her purse. And at that moment, I was just like, you know what? This is pissing me off. So I just told the guy at the till, like, you know what? You want to split this bill, yeah? Hmm. And I'll pay, like, I think I paid, like, 30 pounds. I was like, okay, I'll pay 30. She'll pay 20. I paid my 30. And she was still looking into her purse. Mm, the old, that old chest. The old, yeah. The old, no, wait, yeah. The old, no, I've got this. You know? Fuck. Yeah, and right. then I was like, no, I'm not paying for this because one, I haven't enjoyed this. You know yeah. what I mean? Two, 50 pound is a lot of money for a first date yeah. on a girl I don't know. Uh -huh. You know? Uh -huh. I'm not paying that. 50 quid. It's mm -hmm. not 20 quid. It's not 30 quid. I mean, right. you know, I didn't get to choose the place where we'll go for a date. You chose it. Yeah. So you come and you, you know what I, I mean? I do work for this company. Surely you get a discount. So they got a discount. So ah, that's okay. what I'm telling you. We got a discount and the discount took the bill to 50 quid. So God knows how much oh, it was. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Whoa. So did she think she'd already paid because she'd given you the discount? Who I don't know. I guess so, what? to a certain extent, you know. Mate. So I was just like, no, I'm not paying 50 quid for a day. But first, I didn't choose the location because mm. I know what I'm like and mm. I know what first dates are like. And I'm not going to take a woman on the first date in some expensive places. I'm not trying to prove a point. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's what I agree with. Like, before I take you to an expensive place, I've got to like you first. At this point, I'm like, no, I pay my 30 quid. And I looked around, she was still looking into her purse. I called her over, I was like, yeah, you want to come over, please? Yeah. And then she came, and then I was like, yeah, you need to, you know, you need to pay the time for it, basically. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And then she took, her, she took her debit card, she put it in, she typed her pin in, and it got declined. No. Yes. And I tried to keep a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> She tried it again, second time, and it got declined. At this point, it got embarrassing for all of us involved, and I was keeping a straight face still. But when it got declined the second time, I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to pay for this, you know? At this point, she looked into her purse, she took another card, and then she paid the 20 pounds with that other card. And then, you know, the girl behind the counter was like, oh, yeah, this guy, that, they are very similar, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. This sure. girl was trying to play me yeah, yeah. at some stupid ass game yeah, right. where she was gonna invite me to some expensive place, sit down, chill, have whatever the hell yeah. she wants and then get me to pay it and then freaking piss off again. Piss yeah. off. Yeah exactly. And then she had it all planned out with like they think ten steps ahead. She knew exactly where she was gonna go if that happened. So you got to pay uh, and then you oh she they say fifty quid. If you don't pay She'll try and pay with this cap because they they have a plan. Yeah. We we think so linearly like, like yeah. this happens, then that happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know, we're really like this happens, that happens, and if that happens, uh, and then you've got A, and if that happens, yeah, yeah. You know we've what got I mean? A or B or C and, or D. Yeah. You know? yeah. they've got like a ten step program. Come on, what's, this, what's the rest of the story? So Come on. Then we went out. She went to have a cigarette. She had a cigarette. We chatted for a bit, and yeah. then we just walked towards the front of the hotel. And at this point, I was like. Yeah, so what do you want to do now? She was like, oh, say goodbye. And I was oh. like, cool. Cool. Like, <laughs> oh, I, no. at this point, I, it didn't really bother me. Like, so I was glad I made this bitch pay 
I was glad I also embarrassed her a little bit. Mm -hmm. Give her two kisses on the cheek. Yeah. And then I was trying to leave. This bitch grabbed me to give me a hug. That is just weird. But you know, these hotels, they have like those see-through windows kind of oh, thing. Oh, right. And yeah, I'm yeah. just, everything that happened kind of thing. <laughs> she's trying to give the impression yeah. that... It was on her Yeah, terms. you know what I, I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I just left the place and, yeah. you know, like putting everything together. And, you know, she might have a different interpretation of what happened. Mm. But yeah. those are the facts. The facts are, yeah, right. you know, she chose the place. We yeah. went to eat. Yeah. And the bill came and she didn't want to want to have any part of the actual dinner. You yeah, know, right. she wanted me to pay the full dinner and I was just like, uh, you know, that's not going to happen. So love life's going well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's great, that's great. I was like, I missed out on Tinder. Yeah, but well, uh, I'm not sure you, I'm not sure you missing out is the correct term, but you didn't have to deal with a lot of shit that guys have to deal with. If I have a day and, you know, she tells me that, oh, she can't make it for whatever reason, that whatever reason she's going to give me, I'm looking at it that like, that's bullshit. Yeah, you totally. just don't fancy coming out. It's not polite to say, oh, you know what, I'm tired, I don't want to come yeah. out, like, you know, yeah. but for me, that would be, I would appreciate that honesty, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. That's how I see it. I just see it as, okay, they don't want to come out. And once I've done the asking once, I'm not going to do the asking yeah. again. It's as simple as. It's just like, it's it is what it is, you know? Is it swipe, you know, swipe left or right? I don't swipe right, <laughs> left, whatever. I just swipe, you know, and I just deal with the matches. That's it. But with that being said, I've had uh, three dates recently with three yeah. different women. I've met one of those three dates. I met her about th two times now. Oh, great. Yeah. Man. She's good fun. She's nice talking to. Interesting person. It's good, but I'm not sure if I want to go out with them. Mm -hmm have a relationship whether it be a short-term relationship or long-term relationship mm. i'm not entirely sure i don't want to lead them on sure, if that sure. makes sense you know i want to be able to be a bit adult about things you know yeah. so yeah so at the moment you haven't made a move just because yeah i can't quite figure out what it is i want to do remember 10 steps ahead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So maybe I'm overthinking. No, 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 that, no, that, yeah, no, 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 you're right. Ahead, you're right. Mean, you're right. right. They yeah. are like that meant far ahead. Like, yeah. It's like, uh, no, I mean, I took my, my, my missus that I'm married now yeah. with to Harvester. Yeah. Unlimited salad, mate. Yeah. Unlimited salad. You can have all the salad you want. It doesn't charge you cost you yeah. anymore. Right? That's great. Look That's at me now. Great. That's it. Maybe that one. So don't yeah. take him to harvesters. What I'm saying. Okay? <laughs> I think you know. And yeah. then yesterday I went out on a date. Yeah. I liked her. Like oh. you know, of all the three dates, I'd say I'm more physically attracted to her. She was great company. Mm. Uh, she looked good when she came through. She made an effort. Like yeah. the other days, I mean, they put in the effort, yeah, yeah. but they didn't really put in the effort. You I know mean, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She came out like yo, like, it. and it's probably the impression she gave me was that uh, it's not like she came out because she was coming out on a date. She thought, yeah. you know, she just, just like yeah, that's you know, if she needs to go out, you know, she look after herself. She would, you know, make herself look good, yeah. whatever. So yeah. yeah, so it was kind of like okay, she's got the total package kind of thing. Yeah. But obviously, it's got to be reciprocal. Mm -hmm. Is that the word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's so, I can put all my eggs in one basket and be like, oh, because she's the one I like the most, da da da. Like, I still got to get to know her personality and, you know, things like that. So, that's why at the moment I'm kind of doing American style dating where I'm just going out, seeing them, we have a chat, have a drink kind of thing. Cool. There's been no kissing yet, so I'm not cheating on anybody oh, before play, you people man. start killing me. You know, good, good, I'm like really, you know, yeah. really trying to sort of... Be uh, mature about it and stuff. And yeah, it over. yeah, just yeah. take my time because yeah. like, I think as men, you know, like, yeah. just, you know, horniness, <laughs> horniness can... <laughs> can really cloud our objectiveness, you know? I've noticed that. I have noticed that Def for sure. So, yeah. so um, you know, definitely have a good good old wang before you go on those days. <laughs> so you're not too stressed. You haven't got that, the haunting eye. You know, yeah. like, oh, yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. No, no, so drooling is definitely not, nah, it's not, not appreciated. No, nah, nah, you just, you know, and especially with everything that's going on, like, I think one thing comedy has done for me is that it's uh, given me a lot of, like, female friends. Yeah. And I get to talk to these females and, you know, they tell me about their awful and horrible dates mm. and 
they tell me stuff that I used to do that I wasn't aware of, you mm -hmm. know, so now that I'm aware of those things, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. And then depending on what you want, you know, mm -hmm. I've got to that point where I, I don't necessarily want to have sex with people, just sex. I mean, that's leaving me too empty, you know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, mm -hmm. in a way, whenever I have sex with somebody I don't have any feelings for, I feel like I've been used. <laughs> <laughs> They've taken my question. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, no, I wake up the next day and I just feel bad. Oh, like you man. know, oh, like it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's just you know, and and I never used to feel like that. I never for a sec could make me feel this bad about myself. You know, yeah. and that's one you know that's the one thing that's that's made me decide that you know I. You know when you're young and you go out drinking every yeah. night and you know you black out whatever and you you hang over the next day and you're like oh my god I'm so hungover I'm never gonna do this again and then you go out and you do it again yeah. and you just keep doing it expecting I don't know a change or an outcome or something that's mm -hmm. exactly what mm -hmm. me having sex with you know people I don't necessarily have emotional mm -hmm. feelings for feels like you know mm -hmm. I just go out and the next day I feel shit yeah. and I tell myself I shouldn't do it again but then I get horny and then I f now at 35 you just feel like, dude, I've got to try and get that horniness under control. I can't allow that. <laughs> Tame the beast. You know, yeah. I can't allow that to dictate who yeah, I get yeah. involved with sexually. Sure. Like, you know, it's, it, there's two sides to this. Sure, sure. There's the side where if you meet somebody and the sex is great, you don't feel shit. Yeah, it's true. Because the sex is the sex was great so you feel like oh that was a great experience it's like if you were not drinking and you didn't get blacked out drunk yeah. you just you got tipsy you had a lot to do and you yeah, got tipsy yeah. you remember everything you didn't act like a dickhead so the next day you're not hangover you yeah, wake up yeah. oh last night was a great night yeah. so when you meet somebody that you have sex with and you both on the same sort of sexual wavelength mm -hmm. and the sex is great that emotional side doesn't come into it because you feel like oh that was a great sexual experience but then when that sexual chemistry isn't there, that's when it feels like that was a waste of time. Ah, oh, totally. You know, it's just sad. Yeah. It's just a sad, just sad moment. Just a sad old man just <laughs> looking at his balls, <laughs> hating himself. <laughs> like, why? Why? How do you guys control me so much? Yeah. I want to be free. Yeah, totally. You know? totally. Do they know you're doing comedy these days? Yeah, you? actually. Yeah. yeah, that's something I try not to sort of tell people it's not your or, profile it's not, it's not profile. my profile it's not my profile <laughs> yeah. but he, he comes through like through our conversations yeah. and once they give me the number and we start talking they do ask like, oh so what you're doing today what you're doing tonight what you got planned so I generally don't try and come out and say like oh yeah I'm going to a stand up comedy I'm just like oh I've got this gig to do yeah. I've got this event to attend to that kind of thing yeah. and then they start doing more digging what kind of event is, is it you know like yeah, yeah. and then I kind of give it away right, but you right. know it's not my profile it's not yeah, yeah. I feel like Comedy is kind of like my baby. Right, right, yeah, sure. If you're going to take an interest in it, I'd rather it's an honest interest uh -huh. rather than just an interest just because it's something to talk about, you know. Mm -hmm. We can talk about a lot of other stuff that's going on in the world. It doesn't have to be comedy related. I mean, I've got a job. We can talk about my day job. I feel a little bit of a protective of it, but yeah. I have to say that, you know, of all those three, the conversation we've had about comedy has been pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, they've been, you know, they've been pretty good. Have you got any decent um, bits of material from your dates? You know? Uh, you, you know, maybe when I first started comedy, mm -hmm. I was looking at my love life like somewhere I could get inspiration and mm -hmm. draw your point to have, like, you know, material to write stuff, but... Nowadays, no, I don't, I don't. It's too painful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's too painful, Maybe man. in a few years, something yeah, I'll write yeah. a free show about yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe in a few years, I'll definitely be able to write a free show about the girl who took me to a hotel <laughs> just because she wanted to have lunch. Uh, you know? Has this ever happened to you? I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's happened to you me. You know, I feel like it's a lot healthier when you you don't share some of your private life on stage, mm. you know, yeah. for yourself, like, mm. basically. You don't want to spill everything out on stage, yeah. you know. And then it yeah. depends how comfortable you are as well with those uh, experiences, you know. You're, you're totally right, I think, that because you can overshare. And yeah. I think that sometimes I think that oversharing can really damage your mental health. Because, yeah. like, you go, and that, that's where they go, you know, the, the comedians are the sad, yeah. sad clowns, isn't yeah. it? You overshare and go, Oh, they didn't even laugh at that. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. So uh, you're going great. So that gives me no validation yeah, or, at all. or or you know or, or growth. Yeah. It's just just 
sheer pain, yeah. you know, which yeah. is fine to get get comfortable on stage because then you're like, okay, well, okay. I've said everything now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just fucking let go. Pretty with, much, yeah. just let's start from ground zero, yeah. and that's it. You don't like to over- overshare, as you say. No, I don't. I don't. Mm. I think if there is something funny that I'm gonna bring from my private life onto the stage, then what happened was funny. But I won't go digging into it right. and be like, you know what I mean? Even, you know, that date I had with a girl with her debit card not working and yeah. stuff. I don't think that was funny. I think that was embarrassing more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Like, how are you gonna tell that story on stage for people to laugh? I mean, you could possibly do it if you wanted to, but then you have to somehow make the story flip so that I look like the dickhead. You know what I mean? For exactly. people to laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you imagine women are going to come to to the show or whatever. I'm going to tell them a story about me going out on date and how, you know, this day couldn't pay for a meal. So now it's making me look like a fucking cheapskate. And he said, look, yeah. let, let's be honest. He said, 50 quid meal. We, would women pay a 50 pound meal for a guy they don't know on the first day? Yeah. It's no. Mm-hmm. So why does that make me a cheapskate? Because I'm not willing to pay that 50 quid, mm-hmm. you know? And then I'm not even the one who chose the place, you know? As you said, you could have gone to Starbucks and yeah. paid a fiver. Fiver for a coffee. You know? It's not expensive I'm, enough. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I would have gladly paid. I mean... Like, yesterday when I went on a date and, like, they brought the bill, the girl wanted to split the bill. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to take this. Obviously, it wasn't 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> <It's great>. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's <laughs> great. No. no. But, <laughs> see? That's funny. But, <laughs> it's so funny, right? That's good. That's good. But it's, it's not like... You go out on a day and you, you tell yourself, okay, if a beer comes to 50 quid, we have to speak. It's not like right, that. Right. But it's a whole experience. Yeah, One, right. do you like the person? Would you like to see the person again? Mm-hmm. Did you have a good time? Mm-hmm. Did that make you feel comfortable? Like, when you put yeah, yeah. all those things, mm-hmm. like, to me anyway, it might be different for, for other guys. When you put all, all those things together, mm-hmm. to me, it was like, you know what? I actually had a good time. Okay. Obviously, she wanted, she wanted to pay her. So yeah. it wasn't like a cheap day either, yeah. put it that way. Yeah. But it wasn't an expensive day either. It's so it was affordable yeah. to me, you know. So, so you took out your bank card, and that one just declined. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I like, I, and, and I was like, oh, I don't oh, know, I don't know. Know. yeah. <laughs> 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 so on the third yeah, time I, she still did not repay for the whole meal so alright okay, I had to pay you know I, I, she paid 30 I paid 20 yeah, right? <laughs> so yeah so I got that that's one cool, and, I, cool. and I just told her ah oh, don't worry about it I'm, you know I'm gonna get that's this cool, you know I'm gonna get this I've had a good time if she wanted to go out next time she could get the bill if she wanted to yeah. if she doesn't feel like she wants to go out and next time that's absolutely fine I've had a good time yeah. for her tonight and you know that's mm-hmm. cool yeah. You know, and she was, yeah, she was nice about it. And she was like, okay, next time we go McDonald's. Yeah. And I was like, cool. Oh, sweet. I've got that- some vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, you know. No, it's so, true. Though, yeah, it, like, yeah. it's such a mind feel. People are trying to make dating as if it's black and white. And it's not. I mean, mm-hmm. in my experience, it's definitely not black and white, mm-hmm. you know. Hell and, I, you know, and women are all about, oh, yeah, we should, you know, if they come out, yeah, we should split the bill, blah, blah. But, you know. The fact is, but there are women out there who don't make it easy for men to split the bill, mm. doing the fake reach, not offering even to split the bill. Like, when a guy brings that up, you know, he feels awkward about bringing that up, mm-hmm. you know? And if I have to bring that up, it means that you don't even want to do it. Then if I decide that I want to pay, then that's mm. cool. It tells you a lot about personalities, mm. about people's personalities. I wouldn't say it's one of my highlights or whatever, but it's definitely one of those things, if I walk out of a date, depending on how you went and how you acted, that would also decide if I wanted to see you again. Yeah. The date from yesterday, I'd want to see her again because mm-hmm. I'm quite comfortable knowing that if we went out somewhere, she wouldn't mind getting the bill or she wouldn't mind paying her bill, yeah. you know? So yeah, I yeah. wouldn't feel stressed at, oh, how much does this cost mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know? Yeah, it's, it's about, she'll, I mean, she empathizes with you as well. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like kind of like, well, I mean, imagine if you were going out with her for a longer period yeah. of time, and going, I'm like, oh man, I can't carry this girl. I'll, you know, yeah. I mean, look, look, if she goes down and if something horrible happens, right, yeah. I can lift you, yeah. but I can only lift you so far. Uh, yeah. And hoping, hopefully, you can, you know, kind of drag yeah. me some of the way if yeah. we've got to get yeah. out of a situation, yeah. you know, that's yeah. it. Ladies, 
Make the fucking effort. Yeah, okay? make an effort, man. Make <laughs> totally. an effort. And don't overmake it as well, because I dated this girl last year, mm-hmm. yeah? And whenever we go, she'd want to split everything 50-50. Yeah. And when, this is like after two or three months of dating. Yeah. And whenever we go, she's like, oh, no, we need to split the bill. Like, she won't even say to me, yeah. like, I bring the bill, oh, yeah, we're splitting this. It's yeah. like everywhere. And it's just like, look, yeah. doesn't it make sense for me just to get this and for you yeah. to get this the next time? Yeah. Like, you know, it's to just take it well. in terms, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And she was just like, she was just so stuck up, like... Mm-hmm. So mm. that's one thing as well I learned. It's like, yeah, it's fine to do the 50-50, but yeah. when it becomes an annoying part of your routine, whenever you guys are going out, or, you know, you at the cinema, trying, you know, you've ordered your tickets, your popcorns, whatever, and you're trying to pay, and there's a queue behind you, and, you know, your lady's like, yeah, we need to split this bill. The poor guy at the counter has to, you know, do the math, how much yeah. is 46, 99, divided by 2. It's like, come on, man, mm-hmm. like... Just play by ear. I'm going to get this. Yeah. Tomorrow or whenever we go out, you get the next yeah. one. Keep that's it simple, it. you know? Yeah, that's it. I mean, maybe I overthink this, right? But yeah. when they're constantly like, hey, we need to split this. We need to split this. Does that mean that I'm going to be gone tomorrow because they're, we're yeah, going to fucking even this shit out? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, seriously, it's too much. I'll pay my you debts, know? That's it. It just you know? feel, yeah, it just felt like this girl Militant. basically didn't really want me to have anything on her, like, or, you know, uh, yeah, you Uh, know, or she, I don't know, it was just, it was just a weird aspect of, that was the first time I actually went out with somebody that was like that, and I I just wouldn't do it again. Yeah. When you paid for the bill, did you, like, do it in, like, pound coins, just go, make it rain? (laughs) (laughs) It's my half yeah, the bill, baby. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what is it? Let's, yeah, I lost my bill. That would bloody nice, man. But yeah, she was just annoying oh, after a while, oh, you know. Yeah. And then I had my impression that the vibe she was giving out, you know, mm. to those places where we went to eat or we went to the cinema was like, yeah, we're together, but we're not together kind of thing, mm, you know. Right, okay. It had this this connotation kind of thing, yeah, yeah, you, you know. You may walk with me, but we're like separate individuals. Yeah, you know? I got, I got it just in nice, case. Oh, yeah, and it's just like, I don't know what you're trying yeah. to prove, like, it, you know. Got a guard up all the time. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah. Just chilling yeah. it, have a good time, we're human yeah. beings, just yeah. relax and yeah, have pretty a much. nice time. And it? basically, yeah, yeah, yeah so. You can't, so. So none of this is comedy yet. I think there's a good bit in there, but I think <laughs> you can use that, it'd be great. You're from the Ivory Coast, right? Yeah, definitely, that's right. Yeah, and you, you moved over here when you were like, well, Okay, not, not, not. I, I was born in London, and I grew up in London up yeah. until I was eight. Yeah, yeah. And around the age of eight, basically, my parents and I split up, and... My mom went to live in the Ivory Coast. They didn't split up, basically. Yeah. It was more like of an agreement that they had. Like, you know, my mom was like, look, I finished my studies here. I'm not getting, like, decent jobs. I'm going to go back home and try and see what, what's going on. Kind what of did she thing. study? did, like, secretarial kind of, like, studies. Mm. So it wasn't, like, a PhD or something like that, but it was just... Diplomas guess, Yeah, stuff. diplomas. Which, at the time, were, like, highly so back home. Of course, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah, she went back home and she managed to get a job. So, as far as I know, because I don't know the full story, you know, like, sure, yeah, people yeah. have their own version, blah, Just blah, <laughs> and I've been able to take everybody's version and sort of draw, <laughs> draw my own. Yeah. But as far as I understand it, the agreement was she was going to go back home, find a job. If she found a job, then my dad was going to come take me to go and live with her basically because mm-hmm. she would have been able to pay the bills and then my dad be able to look for work so basically that's what why she went back home so she went back home and looked for work she found a job and my dad was here and he just started fucking around with some other woman basically <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> just waving goodbye like, you know. yeah, well, I'm ringing you can you not hear me no that's not her yeah. <laughs> oh, what then, happens, uh, happens. I, yeah, after you know obviously my mom like became suspicious sure. like you know so she came yeah. over to England and like she confronted him we had a massive argument she was like no I want my son back you know yeah, right. and a few months later I just went to the Ivory Coast so right. did my primary school high school in the Ivory Coast oh. came back in 2000 I went to college yeah, man. then I went to like university what did you do what did you do in uni and college I did I hated it man oh, like, no. I did access to computing okay yeah. at, at college yeah. which I didn't like 
the only reason I did that was because back home that's what I was studying and I didn't like it you mm-hmm. know but it was just that thing where you programming know, and stuff yeah like programming that, yeah. I didn't like it it was right. just too much numbers you yeah. know I tried to explain that to my dad like look I don't like this thing blah blah, blah. I want to yeah. do this thing and he was like no you're doing this oh. this is for you this is for your future it's going to make you a better man yeah. I know somebody who's a computer programmer do you know how much he's making and yeah. I was like look I don't give a shit how much he's making I yeah. don't want to do this thing you know like I don't want to do it. That didn't lead to anything, you yeah. know, so I just stuck at it. Finished my course, passed it, then I had to go to uni and I was like, okay, I don't want to do this computer thing. Yeah. So I ended up studying that like, music production, oh, yeah. which was a very bad idea <laughs> because they didn't teach you anything with yeah. regards to a production. It was oh. a lot of it was that like, theory based. So yeah. you graduated, unless you knew how to use instruments beforehand. Like, Fantastic you just balancing. graduated with just a bunch of theory-based stuff about sound. Was it like an audio engineer yeah. type thing? Like, you got to yeah. know the desk and, yeah, and the ins and outs of, like, yeah. how it's cabled and yeah. stuff? Yeah, like, oh, but mass. basically what yeah. I wanted to do, I wanted to, to, to know, like, how to become the next Dr. Dre. Right, you know? that's right. I wanted to be in there, mm-hmm. you know, um, producing, just stuff. producing, doing yeah. the beats, you know? Yeah. yeah. Getting the artists to come through, working mm-hmm. on the vocals, making sure the vocals sit through the beats, you know. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanted to do, like, mm-hmm. you know, how you sort of chop and slice, you know, yeah. mix what, that is what I wanted to do, like, right in the middle of it. But it wasn't anything like that, it was like all theory based, and I guess I should have bailed out after the first year or something. I was just too scared, and I, I just didn't want to think, and I was like mm-hmm. smoking too much weed to actually. <laughs> Yeah, sit yeah. down and make an objective decision about look mm-hmm. this is not working out it's yeah. not what you thought it was gonna be yeah. maybe just transfer and find another course or something but just, stressful times but that's it it's terrifying you know, that, that yeah you know like, shit i'm locked into this so i've got to finish it yeah pretty I've much fucking, you know? uh, and like and you know yourself because i always tell you i mean like you know i bet your parents were like you know yeah. like your dad said like yeah. oh finish this pretty finish much, it you know. you know what right sometimes in my life i thought i thought to myself fuck it why should I finish this fucking... If I'd have bailed out, I'd have more time to do the other thing. thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Much, it's like, because yeah. you finish that thing and go, yeah, okay, I finished it, but I know that... Yeah, but... You know, for, your, for, your, for your soul, you could have yeah. go, I need to finish this. Yeah. But for your time, for time, yeah. you're like, fuck, if I bail out this... And, like, a lot of people drop out of college, you yeah. know, and they go on to do the thing they want to do, like, and they go, yeah. like, fuck, I dropped yeah. that thing. And they don't... I wonder, you, know, you think to yourself, like... Because I think your parents are afraid, or people are afraid right. that aren't don't know where you want to go or yeah because they don't know you don't know where you want to go that if you stop you don't finish one thing the next thing you'll do you won't finish that either and then it'll become a a a rot which you'll just go oh you'll start something and stop because it'll become a habit but i I don't think that's true though i don't think think that's just a a a, a fear that a lot of people have of like oh i've started one thing i'll I'll, you know uh, you've got to keep trying and 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 failing and and going you know but but you know, whereas yourself, I'm the same as you. Yeah. I'll start something and I'll finish it, man. It doesn't matter how where it goes. I don't care. I'm, I'm finishing yeah. this thing. You know, yeah. that's it. Whatever it is. It, ultimately, I'm hoping that's a good thing for both yeah. of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so much pressure on young kids, and you know yeah. what's going to be successful, what's not going to be successful. Yeah, yeah. There's so much attached to the outcome of doing something uh-huh. you know the only reason people bring their kids to school is because they want them to be successful when they finish school mm-hmm. you know but with that being said it could do something that wasn't academic and uh-huh. still be successful mm-hmm. in his own way you know yeah. yeah i didn't enjoy that bit i mean i wanted to enjoy it but i didn't get what i wanted out of yeah. it and i just wished like I had the maturity to go like, you know what, this is not working out, mm-hmm. I'm just going to do something else. to do. So anyway, I finished that, then I started working as a civil servant for a good few years. It was alright, yeah. it was alright, but again, I never wanted to work in an office. Right. That is something I knew from a young age, from 18, 19, I was just like, I, like my mom worked in an office. You know, day in, day out, growing up with a, a sort of soda, felt like, okay, this Suffocate, is not for isn't me. It? Yeah. It's, it's suppressing. Like you just go and do the same thing over and over again every day. You see the same people, you pretend that oh, you Oh, happy, happy birthday, here's yeah, some cakes. Like you care, oh. you know. And, <laughs> you know, I just, I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. So I did this for a while, maybe after two, two years into it, I went on to a course a comedy course with Harry Denford, oh, yeah. a school of comedy, uh-huh. and then we had to do a graduation thing. I had like two minutes of material, 
And yeah, and I came out and I invited some of my civil service friends that come up. Yeah, I did the two minutes and it was, it felt long at the oh. time. It felt like the longest two minutes I've ever had. <laughs> and it went well enough, but I wasn't happy with the jokes. All the oh. jokes were like, all the jokes weren't really me, you know, like, it was more or less like uh, this Harry guy, you went through the course and he just tells you, okay, what's funny about you or what do people find mm. funny about you, you know? Mm. And then, so for me, it was all race-based, like, oh, I'm so black like this, oh, can I do accent, you know, things like that. And I was mm. like, I did it, but I went comfortable with it and it was just, you know, I was still trying to figure out, okay, I want to do this comedy thing, but this is definitely not the guy I want to be on stage, you know. Yeah. I don't want to be the guy who's going out on stage and doing accent. I don't want to be the guy who's going out on stage and being like, hey, look at me, I'm so black. Like, I've had that growing up, you know. Sure. I'm not trying to, yeah, so. To reinforce that stereotype. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much. And that's the, op- at least you know the opposite of what yeah, you no, want. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure out. So I yeah. did that gig, went well. And then my second gig was booked to do Stratford Theatre. Right. This is at the time where he was freaking rough as shit. Which, do you mean last week? <laughs> no, I mean, now, no, at least now, you don't get booed. Me? At least now, okay. like, I, I don't, like, I've been, I, I've been, like, last year, and it's like, if they're not feeling you, the crowd will just be, like, they'll just be sitting there watching you or talking, you know, between one another, that kind of thing. But when I did my second gig, right, I went there, I told my first joke, right, because I had to write five minutes of material. So I already had about two minutes, which I thought killed, and I thought, yeah, that works, right? <laughs> <laughs> Luck and and then I wrote another three minutes, right? So I went there, I started, I did my first joke, but I didn't laugh. I did my second joke, but I didn't laugh. I do my first joke, even don't laugh at me, I did the hell out of it, right? Mm-hmm. So I did my third joke, but I did not laugh. And I was like, okay, you know, I think I'm going to go. Funny thing is, I had my best friend there, and he brought a girl, like, as a date for me. So it couldn't go any worse at this point, you know. I'm like, okay, guys, you know what, I'm going to go. And then somebody in the audience, no, mate, you got five minutes. Come on, you can do this. You can, come on. The whole crowd sort of rallied around and started applauding, like, come (laughs) on, mate, you can do this, come on. And me, like a stupid fucking fool, I thought, yeah, these guys are so supportive. Let me try and make them laugh. <laughs> They're with me. Oh, great. So I just carried on. I just carried on. And the more jokes I told, I was getting nothing. But this crowd was still supportive. Come on, man. Come on. Like, they were just enjoying themselves watching me fucking die on stage, right? And I was so, so naive. I just thought they genuinely wanted me to do well. For five minutes, I died on my ass straight up. I've done a few times the Stratford one. But, you know, Lubo? Yeah. He was on this podcast as well. Okay. He was telling me. He said he, he lives not far from Stratford yeah. as well. And he said that he never will perform at the Stratford because he saw the MC mm-hmm. get punched on stage oh, night fuck. by one of the audience members yeah. and the MC was doing the wrong thing. And the, 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 the MC said, oh, you're, you're gay. And then the guy was like, oh, really, mate? Oh, and he goes, and the MC was like, you're going to punch me? And the guy just went, boom, <laughs> and nailed him. And so, like, like you know, Amazing. you might have had a bad night, no, yeah, but it I wasn't one of those nights. No, no, I mean, no. Like, I, I, did a, I did a course, like, but maybe... Twenty foot from there, yeah. the East Fifteen acting school, okay, right? Yeah. And uh, and like you know, I used to go up there. I, I did that the other day. I was like, you know, like guys, I've done. Uh, I've done comedy well. And like you know, I did my first gig up in this Stratford. Yeah. Uh, you know, the East yeah. Fifteen Strat School. Look how far I've come. Another funny thing about this gig, right, was that my friend was there. So I like I I died obviously. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna stick around and see what the other people do. You know. Next after me, I don't know if they had a break or straight after me. No, I think they they brought somebody else straight after me. You can't have a break after a performance so freaking horrible, (laughs) right? So they brought Robert... Robert White, yeah. They brought on Robert White, yeah. yeah. So Robert came onto the stage, right? And straight away, he dived into my act, like... Oh, Trevor Fall, this was going to be funny. Ha, 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 ha. And I've met him since then. <laughs> I've never confronted him about any... Like, I, I never brought it up, basically, sure. to him. That's cheap, man. Like, mm. even if you feel like, oh, this guy's never going to perform stand-up again, mm. or I don't know this guy, or whatever. Yeah. And then I got to see him. We did some other gigs together, and I got to, like, I got to be on the same bill as him. Yeah, right. And, you know, on the same in the same category, not like he's a headliner. Nah, like, so, you know, I'm not saying, like, I, 
I've come a long way or whatever. That's not wrong. You know, but yeah. you know, I'm just saying that like, you know, it's not it's not nice, Robert. What you did, you're probably not gonna listen to this <laughs> podcast. But you if know. you do, I want you to know that what you did was wrong. You hurt my feelings <laughs> as a straight black man. You didn't have to do that. Yeah. That was your second gig, right? That was my second gig. I had another gig lined up after that, and I died so badly. It was great. <laughs> You know, one of those deaths so, so, you die so bad on stage. I never thought I'd feel so free yeah. by dying on stage. But that just liberated me, you know, yeah. Yeah. in terms of w- the person I wanted to be on stage, you know. Yeah. Because most of those jokes that I'd written, the two-minute routine and the three-minute thing that I'd written to have a five-minute spot mm. were things I wrote thinking the audience would like. Yeah, yeah. The one thing I wrote for myself and for, hey, this is funny, mm. I was pandering to the audience mm. already. Mm. So on my second game, having the audience reject me that badly for pandering to them, it was like, well, fuck it. I might as well tell them what I want to tell them. And if they don't like it, mm. at least it's yeah. what I want to tell them. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you could walk out with your head held yeah, high. No, I said what I much. wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah. At least I said what I wanted to say. Take that. You didn't like it. Okay. Fine. But, you know, at least there is some pride in it. And yeah. I could work towards something, you know. And so, yeah, from my perspective, it was liberating. Because straight after that second gig, it was like, okay, dude, you need to write stuff that you find funny so i went through that process of you know writing stuff that i found funny Mm -hmm. and that just helped me basically Mm -hmm. it helped my writing process made things a lot easier and as well i didn't take it to heart when i went out and you know i performed and people didn't laugh it was still like okay they didn't like this bit i've just got to work on it a bit more when you're on stage right you know we all model ourselves on like uh, like archetypes of characters. So you go up there and you go, I said what I wanted to say and I'm done. <laughs> and that's cool. I'm the, I'm the same. I like yeah. to do what I want to do and if yeah. you don't like it, it's fine. And I love that. And it's like, yeah. like whatever. I'll, I'm, I'm, this is what I wanted yeah. to say tonight. Maybe tomorrow night it'll be said differently. Maybe, yeah. But like, you know, so do you see us like, I don't want to put an idea because mm-hmm. I want you to, from your own words, so like, mm-hmm. when you go up, like, you know, because you die in your own terms, yeah. then, right? What, kind of being do you see yourself as when you're going up there you know not Trevor but like you're like I'm one of the sort of I don't know you know like you're showing me like you're coming I'm the you know like uh, do you you know what I'm saying I know this is a weird question I never asked this question before because because like you could be in terms of like you've got the you know there is like the self confidence that it's gonna be funny that's a weird thing because you you don't wanna go out on stage and look extremely self-confident because then the crowd will hate you because they'll think that oh like this guy hasn't said nothing yet Mm -hmm. and you know what I mean it's almost like that thing you have about you and I'd say probably it's just just making people feel at ease okay but for me I like to go up and I think to myself you know if I die I die on my own sword. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, because my words are the sword. It's like a slay the audience sword. I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't happen all the time. No, <laughs> no, no. I might have you a know, little pen knife you, and go, you okay, I'm going to stab you a little bit, you know? You're making me think about Ned from Game of Thrones, you oh, know what I mean? Right, right. Okay, so, so would you ever think, you know, if we go up there and go, ah, uh, you know, uh, today may be my day, but it may be their day. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you know, because you go to war. But yeah. You, like, do you see yourself as, like, a, as a soldier going up there? Do you see yourself as, like, what do you see? As, like, I mean, I know you're yeah. you. You're still yeah. you, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying yeah. you're yeah. Really, But, like, you That's know. That's a very good question. And I think I try not to be attacked to the outcome. I think when I first started, I was always attacked to the outcome, which is to make people laugh. Mm-hmm. Now, it's more like, okay, ultimately, I want to make people laugh. Yeah. But if they don't laugh, Nothing really changing into my world, you know. I still got bills to pay, yeah. but bill, you know what I mean. I still got to get up and go and do my job. Mm-hmm. I've still got these other gigs lined up, mm-hmm. you know. So I try not to be attacked to the outcome yeah. of my set. Okay. And basically, because what I've noticed is, whenever I've had a big gig in the comedy uh-huh. world, you know, wherever it's a comp or whatever, mm-hmm. I start thinking about the outcome of a gig, what it's going to lead to, and that makes me very anxious Mm -mm. once i get anxious i go out there on stage and you can tell by the sound of my voice there's anxiety Uh in that first joke i deliver which results in the crowd or audience not laughing Mm. as loud as 
I've told that joke without the anxiety and mm. people laugh. And straight away, the fact that they don't laugh as loud as what I've heard before mm. affects me and the rest of the performance just mm. goes down here. The way I've found to deal with it is just not to be attacked to the outcome. Yeah. Just have confidence in the material like, look, mm. You've been doing this, you did that to two people in a basement somewhere, they liked it. You did it to 50 people on yeah. stage somewhere, they liked it. Trust the material, forget about what's going to happen and just go out there and just do what you usually do and then we see what happened after that. I got, I got that right. Yeah. Is there a, a sort of... Uh, is there a sort of superhero <laughs> yeah, kind no, of yeah, feel I mean, about that's it? Me, yeah, that's no, it. No, not is there, really. Not, I mean, not, maybe I just think too much in films and like... No, you know, but and like, like... But you got there as Trev, right? Which is fine. Yeah. No, you maybe, know, maybe like, maybe if I had to like yeah. compare or if I had to think like that yeah. I'd say probably, you know, my favourite characters yeah, like in yeah. movies, right? Yeah. I was like, I was uh, an orthodox cops. Yeah, yeah. You know, that just break the rule breakers, you know, the renegade. Yeah. And that's how I feel. I feel like comedy allows me to break rules. It allows me to come out on stage and mm. say stuff that in normal circumstances yeah. people we found foul or people, you know, yeah. in you know, in regular conversation people won't stand up for that. But on comedy stage it allows me to say all those truth that I feel. Right. And yes, I've got to make it funny. But I think if you go through the lines, underneath them, there is a message, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you get two types of audience. You get your audience who just gets the joke and, you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. And then you get your audience who not only gets the joke, but gets as well the reference that you're making. Uh -huh. When people get that, I feel proud. But uh -huh. So this is the kind of thing where I feel like maybe I could write better. But in terms of how I feel, I feel more like an outlaw cop. Like you're a cop, which means that you're supposed to follow the law, but you're kind of an outlaw. So you're a bad cop, right? You're like, yeah, yeah I'm like, a, like bad, a... I'm a bad cop <laughs> but who is needed by the force because I solve crime. What's the guy from Training Day? Denzel. Denzel, that's what Denzel yeah. watched yeah. from Training Day. No, but Denzel training. was bad. He wasn't solving crime. He was lining his own pockets. You know what I mean? He was lining his own pocket. He was setting up deals left, right and centre, you, you know? Right. You, need so, some, you need some deals, mate. So, you need to, yeah, 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 but, but you need to get some yeah, money along the way. I, mean, well, I feel more like, you know, I think... I don't watch enough Luther, right. but I think maybe yeah. if there had to be a character, but right. I could probably... I'd say more like Luther, like, okay. he solves crime, but, you know... He's going to get it done. Yeah, he's you know, it done. He's, he's still a good guy yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So right. that's, that's pretty much how comedy makes me feel, like, right. you know... Still breaking laws, but I'm a good guy. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> kinda, yeah. As you say, this, it's liberating that, that kind yeah. of like, because that thing when you die in front of a lot of people, mm. a lot, you know, you walk off and go, okay, right. and you think so. It, it can always go worse, but there's that, okay, well, I've died in front of X amount of people. 50 is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, and that's it. So you kind of like, you learn freedom. So you go, oh, well, you know, it's all right. No, it's, it's, you know, I've already hit the bottom. Yeah. You know, Drake style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Now I'm heading to the top. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah, it. there is that aspect, but there's also the aspect where I feel like, I definitely feel like I don't work hard enough. Okay. You know, I look at my peers and what they're yeah. doing and the amount of writing they're doing, how, many, how much they're gigging, and I feel like, yeah, I should be. But I understand that people have... People approach things differently. Mm. Just because they're doing things that way doesn't necessarily mean if I do it the same way, mm. I'm going to be successful, you know? Exactly. I've always got that feeling where I just feel like, okay, I'm not doing enough and I should be doing more. But with that being said, you've got to find what works for you. With yeah. regards to having bad gigs, how it works for me is that because I already feel like I'm not doing enough, uh -huh. when I have a bad gig, I go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. straight away. Mm -hmm. If I when I have a bad gig, it's like okay, fuck this. You, this is what happened when you take everything for granted, and you know. Mm -hmm. So it means I'm gonna start listening back to my old tapes. I'm gonna start typing up my set. I'm basically gonna be on it like proper. I do well, and then I get my confidence back, and then I get back into that old routine of not listening to your sets, mm -hmm. not typing everything up, not knowing <laughs> everything word for word. Yeah. But with that being said as well, there is something that's liberating about not knowing, you know, not mm -hmm. knowing your set word for word for word exactly mm -hmm. like it is because you don't want to sound like a computer yeah, when you yeah. go out there. You know, you, you, I think delivery-wise, you want to make it sound as natural as possible.
I'm pretty sure if you were to go through your set and learn it inside out, you could make it sound that way. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. But I'm equally sure you can make it sound that way without mm -hmm. necessarily learning your set inside mm -hmm. out. And then if I've learned something exactly it's supposed to be, how I'm supposed to say, if I miss one word, that throws me off. Because you're annoyed yourself, you've missed it. You yeah. know by now, I've done it so many yeah. times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to stay so, loose, though, haven't you? Yeah, you stay loose. You know? just, yeah. So that throws you off. Then that might hamper the rest mm. of the performance. Yeah, yeah. Whereas at the moment, the approach is, like, okay, I know myself, I know the story. Mm. I mean, I could tell it. I've told it enough times. I've listened to it kind of thing. It's loose enough for me to go, like, okay, I know the punch now. Mm -hmm. So... I know the setup, I know the punchline, and it's kind of like okay, in between there, I've got you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah a little play because yeah. you need to have a bit of play with it as well. Yeah, so definitely. To see what might go a different way or a better way, you yeah. don't know, isn't it? No. And it never, it's never finished. No. And it's like stuff because I, I like, I, I love your leg of lamb joke. It's oh, great. Thanks for that. It's great. Mate. We're not going to butcher it here. Hey, thanks comedy, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Well, no. And so uh, you uh, and you're doing st stuff like you're doing tens for the comedy yeah. store now, aren't you? Yeah, as well. yeah. Which is great. I mean, that's it. You know, it's going, it's going great. You say you're not doing enough. I mean, yeah, but yeah, he's going all right. Same. Like, but you know, like you always hard on yourself, so it's oh, not. You know what I mean? You mm. always hard on yourself, mm -hmm. so it's all. You, you always are. Uh, you see your peers are doing yeah. this and this and that, but equally, yes, I'm doing that. But I guess that like, I'm not looking at what I'm doing. I'm looking at like, oh shit, they're doing this and this and that. You know, yeah, yeah. I, you know. So That's it's like, okay, That's the yeah, you know. Point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, doing all these gigs has sort of allowed me to be like, okay, mm -hmm. I've got my own thing going on and I've, I've got, yeah, I've got to work on that. And, you know, you've got to have things that are loose enough for you to be able to improvise on stage. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on the approach you really want to have. Mm -hmm. My approach is more like free stuff. I, like, I listen to a, an increasingly insane and healthy amount of rap music. Oh, yeah. And freestyle. Mm hmm the thing with rap is that like, yes you need to lower your lines inside out but you also need to improvise you also mm. you know like yeah. it's all comes through your swagger so mm. yeah the way i look at it is like okay i got a topic at hand how can i play with this as much as possible mm. eventually build it up mm. to something to an entire routine yeah, yeah. and once you're able to to give yourself a freedom. That's when I talk about not being attached to the outcome. So if you've got a five spot or a ten spot, obviously you don't want to go and do do it at those big gigs. You kind of like, okay, yeah, I, I might die tonight. I might not. But you're not attached to the outcome. You're mm -hmm. attached to what you're actually going to do on stage. That's the focus point. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, let's, let, let's go. Mm -hmm. And I've got this topic. These are the things I'm going to talk about, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the things I want to explore. And you go out on stage and it's like, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then that freedom allows you to find, okay, what's funny in what bit, whatever. And then you can go back and sort of try and put that together so it's a bit more neat. Mm -hmm. It's like throwing a whole pizza at the wall yeah. and then the bit that stick to the wall you just take them mm -hmm. and you both have a bit that you keep mm -hmm. that's how i do it mm -hmm. other people could sit down for hours and hours and write and write and write mm -hmm. i found that process extremely tedious mm -hmm. i've tried doing it it's not always productive for me and you want to have the joy and fun in it because you yeah. do it for fun right? yeah, and it's, yeah. And you love it and you don't want to just take all the fun and the joy out of it it's just times we need to kind of like just little bits you might want to shape and hone and or what, yeah. connect them together yeah. then you don't want to over drill it because otherwise you'll lose as you say you'll become a robot they want to have the see the joy you have yeah, in a bit as well much, yeah. otherwise you're like fuck man well what right, the fuck yeah. am I doing this mm. you know this is it it's got to be fun for you yeah. number one yeah. like a lot of people say oh you need to it's for them but yeah. it is and it is it is for you it as well it is for you though. too you know you've well, yeah. you got to give them all yeah. your joy and they give you some back if back. they can yeah definitely you know, because there's so many people they give you a lot so definitely. that's why it's so yeah. high isn't definitely. it definitely but like I say man you're doing the comedy store like a certain tens of comedy store man you know that's great yeah, so you yeah, take it. Don't look at everyone else, man. It's like it's, you know what? It's I know easy. It's, it's easy to say don't look at everyone else. You Facebook know? is horrible. It's don't look easy, at but I do, yeah. At the same time, that's definitely what you say. Like, mm. look at your own thing, and mm. I think what's what's been what I've seen that's been great. These days, I've started doing my own gig. Yeah, in, uh, muddy waters. Right? Yeah, muddy waters, basically, and it's something I've thought about doing for a long time, yeah. but. I've always been scared in terms of, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go to uh, 
talk to a pub manager, like I want to do this comedy. But this is what we were talking about earlier, about yeah. me getting into Certain adulthood ones. and being yeah. more assertive. I know what I'm doing. I've got that confidence. Doing doing your gig definitely pushed me towards, you run the lovely gig, oh, by the way. It's, you know, it's amazing. You thought, I can only lovely be crowd. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm I just, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's no, a comedy. You no, see someone's yeah, stage and shit, and you go, oh, I can only do better than nah. that. No, no, you, no, you, no. See, you see your peers, and I, I see what you guys did there with the, yeah. I think they sell like organic food, yeah, yeah. food and so I, you know, I seen that and it was just like, yeah, dude, like, you you know, that gave me enough confidence to be like, you know, dude, like, if you found a place mm. that was decent, mm. a decent setup, basically, mm-hmm. to do the comedy, yeah. then everything else, you can work around yeah. everything else. I think the main thing is that the actual area to do the comedy is decent. I meant to speak to that venue for like six months. I know, you know Susan Murray? Yes. Yeah. She used to run a gig there All before. Right. Mm. So I asked her for permission and she's mm. like, yeah, you know, she's had a different experience, but mm-hmm. you know, if I wanted to run a gig, I'm more than happy to talk to them. Mm-hmm. This is six months after my conversation with her. We agreed to start at the beginning of the year, then we had a change of management, mm. but you know, the new guy came in and he was pretty happy about the agreement that was already in place mm-hmm. and yeah it's, and it's helped me put it together and mm-hmm. it's going good i mean i look at the acts that are coming to play and i'm like okay That's like you know good. yeah it's a bit surprising but hey you That's know great. That's yeah great. i mean like i didn't expect like these guys would want to play you know so mm-hmm. it's like oh okay you know right. it's uh yeah it's, uh, it's as you say you always look at what other people are doing mm-hmm. and you don't look at what you're doing yeah, yeah. And you don't know that what you like, you never really value what you're doing. Like mm. it's great, you're putting something good together. You know, mm. just because Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is always throwing things out there. You know, mm. and it's kind. You know, if you spend too much time on social media, it makes you feel like shit. I'm Absolutely. not doing enough. That's yeah. bullshit. It's like you yeah, know, just, yeah. It, like just keep the you know, it's people trying to put a profile out yeah. there and saying, oh yeah, I'm doing this. I'm so great. Yeah. This. I'm you know. That's it. Blinkers on. Keep yeah. a look and just keep focused and on just, what you're yeah, doing, mate. That's yeah, all. Definitely. Is. What was the biggest thing to overcome when you you started comedy? What do you think in your head? What was the things? Oh man, can't do that because of this. The ex the audience's expectation. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, you don't get a lot of like black dudes or people from ethnic minority on the mainstream stage. Mm. So my thing when I started was oh the audience is going to expect the kind of comedy they've seen on Def Jam on thing, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. And I'm like, yeah, I like Def Jam, but I could never perform like those guys mm-hmm. just because my upbringing was so different. I spent eight years here and then another 10 years in the Ivory Coast. Mm-hmm. And I went to the Ivory Coast, I couldn't speak French. Mm-hmm. So the first thing was for me to learn French. The first few years I was getting into fights oh, all the oh. time. Mm-hmm. Upbringing was a lot of fighting and oh. then... My dad wasn't there, like, you know, and he was my best mate, like, you know, my dad was my best mate. So going out there, him not being there, my mom not explaining to me what's going on, mm. because we have this African community thing where it's that the kid we not understand. Mm. We have this ment- he's a kid, he won't understand, so I'm not going to bother explaining to him, you know. So I had all these questions, and he was like, yeah. since no one would explain uh-huh. what's going on to me, it felt like I couldn't ask anything uh-huh. either, or when I asked, it wasn't answered. I don't understand this guy's languages. Uh-huh. I'm always getting into fight. I don't like this place, you know. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So, basically, I'm, 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 if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, you can just yeah. say, like, the lonely clown, seeking that validation, which is, yeah. like, I find that, like, as I say, because mm. like, in a different place, but yeah. a similar sort of um, nomadic sort yeah. of upbringing. Okay. And, and then sort of like that, ostr- you know, because you're on your own, right? In yeah. your head, you're like, oh, yeah. fuck, you know, you've got a brother? I got a brother, but, like, from my dad and mom, like, Mm-mm. I got brother and sister, but everyone is half. Okay, all me. around the place then. They're all mixed like, up. Like, everyone, right? no, that's what I'm saying. Everyone is half to yeah, me. Yeah, right, right. You know? Yeah, everyone yeah. else got brother and sister, same sure. blood. Sure, sure, yeah. And then I'm the only one. God damn it, the <laughs> outside. <man. laughs> the outside. So even in my family. own family, I'm like the fucking outsider, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you better be the funny one at home, right? So you get noticed. Hey, so, uh, you know... What do you think of this joke? Okay, that's great. Um, yeah, that's terrible, yeah, man. That's so, terrible. I think, yeah, like, in a weird way, I guess uh, I guess the first thing I'd say was yeah. that when in the Ivory Coast, while mm. I was trying to fit in, I felt like I fitted in right, right. until I went into my teenage years. Yeah. 
and, and yeah, and then I knew that, yeah, you know what, I don't fit in. These guys think this differently to yeah, me, yeah, 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 right. yeah was, and, and then yeah. you kind of go, actually, do you remember when I was younger? Fuck you. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a fuck you mentality, I think, yeah, that stays with you throughout you know? your life, I think, in, yeah. in that situation, like, because you have to protect yourself, yeah, isn't it? Totally. And you kind of go, right, okay, well, and then as you get older, you sort of go, yeah, I kind of I like, I kind of like this, yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. you do yeah. protect yourself. You do, you do. And yeah. then when you go on stage, I think what you, I did the same okay. with the yeah. the kind of like right. I'm going to go up there and I maybe give them what I think they want, yeah. but I'm I'm still not going to let let them in. Yeah. And then eventually you have to kind of let them in a little bit, not be totally vulnerable, yeah. but vulnerable yeah. enough yeah. to understand yeah. and have some self awareness, yeah. isn't it? I guess fear of, of rejection, isn't it? Is it? No, I mean, no, like, at this head. point, I'd embrace rejection. Oh like, no, but before when, before you started, it. no, this point now, but yeah. when you started it, when you first started, when coming. when yeah, yeah, yes. when I yeah. first started, it yeah. was that fear of rejection. I wanted. I wanted to I wanted to be embraced and yeah I think yeah <laughs> make it okay <laughs> yeah but, so yeah so biggest obstacle my come. biggest obstacle so yeah biggest obstacle was the perception of the audience because sure. I've been I felt like up to this when I felt like I've been judged all my life like wherever it was me yeah. as a kid going to be articles mm-hmm. you know uh, trying to fit in there uh-huh. everywhere so I just felt like just being accepted. Uh-huh as a human being first, you know, not a black person, sure. not a guy, just a human being. Mm-hmm. Like, if I could just get that, and then I tell the jokes, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Totally. So I think, to me, that's been, like, the biggest obstacle. And I, But I think now, it's, now when I get out on stage, I don't necessarily feel like, oh, it's the black dude coming up on stage. Now I just feel like, yeah, it's just a dude. I think as well, like, the audience, it gets that vibe. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you're not, so worried about if you're representing, you know, your whole race sure, or if sure. you're representing your sex thing, like if you're a woman, you know, uh-huh. the audience get that vibe. So mm-hmm. now I've been able to like loosen up a lot more mm. and then I get on stage and I'm able to do stuff and, you know, if I get into race stuff, they can buy into it because I'm not coming in with that attitude of like, yeah. So for me, that would have been uh, the biggest obstacle. Thanks. You're writing your new sh- your show, right? You're yeah. our show, right? What, so what's your show called? The show is going to be called Cool Story, bro. Right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it a narrative or is it like, uh, what is it? Well, I think there is a narrative to it. Um, one of the reasons I call it Cool Story, bro, I'm not the ones to do like puns on the title of your show and things like that. I spend a lot of time on YouTube watching like rap battles and things, you know, and it's... Cool story, bro, is a term that young people use a lot. There is that, then there is the aspect that a lot of my comedy is storytelling based. That's where it comes from. The narrative, basically, likely to be a bunch of stories that I tell, that I've gone through as a human being, and how they shape my outlook on life, basically. That's... You know, that's how I want the big ending to be. And this is why now I think like this. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my show last year. That sounds exactly like my show last year. No, I don't. But you... That's great. No, that's exactly... No, that's good. It's important. I think, you know, I think that's the best kind of show to begin with. Because yeah. then you go... Because then all, all your comedy, you, you yeah. do after that, you go, this is where my entire thought yeah. process comes from. Right, yeah. you've, you've delved into who you are and right, gone, yeah. oh... This connects with that, and then and yeah. then so everything in life now mm. connects with this whole narrative that yeah. I've made here in the beginning. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, after that, it was like uh, like after I did mine, I was like, oh man, now I know. Yeah. I'm always angry about everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like you, you, you know, I I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily gonna be like the funniest or biggest show. I mean, ultimately, I want it to be funny. I don't really, I'm, you know, I don't want it to be like just about me. But I sort of I feel like. Doing club sets, what yeah. club, why, why club sets are great is that they don't allow you to dwell too deeply into the person you are, into your experiences, you know, you're just mm-hmm. telling jokes, you know, and whatever you do, puns or storytelling or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever form of comedy you do, when you're doing club sets, it's just being funny. You come out, you're funny, they book you again. Yeah. And trying to put a show together... It's kind of different. So in mm-hmm. talking, I sort of, I had probably one joke about me going to the Ivory Coast, basically. I talked a little bit about it a couple of years ago when I did uh, a split show with Ella, what it was like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, spending time in a military academy. But these are things I want to maybe spend more time dwelling into because that has also shaped me, you know. There's a, my upbringing, how I came 
to live in the Ivory Coast and then what my life was like in the Ivory Coast. Mm. Me coming over to the UK and trying to settle back in again. Mm. Definitely, there's going to be an element of dating as a you know as a team. To that that no, that's right. fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's going to be into it. Like because I'm still single at 35, and at 20, I didn't think that far, but I didn't think I'd be single too. You know, mm-hmm. without trying to sound arrogant, I'm not a bad-looking guy either. You know, it's I'm not the lowest of the low. So I've got a job. Like, you know, like if you wanna go through all them tick boxes, I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah. You know? So there is that aspect as well where I'm asking myself like either I'm really fucked up that no woman can spend enough time with me and be like, you know what, fuck this guy. I don't wanna spend any more time with him kind of thing. Or I'm I'm trying to figure out what what went wrong? Like, am I too picky? Is it simple? Is it really a really simple thing or am I overthinking? Mm-hmm. Because it's all right. There's a lot of guys who are single, at, you know, in their mid-30s. Admittedly, they'll probably have a kid or something. Uh-huh. But I've got none of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is something I want to explore as well. Maybe shed a light on what it's like for a single guy in his mid-30s to date. Because we hear a lot of stories about women and what it's like for them to date in their mid thirties, being single and things like that. I don't necessarily feel that guys tell their side of a story. Mm-hmm. The male culture is like, ha, single 35, you're living the life, man. Yeah, it's, pretty it's, much. It's, and it's, it's like, it's, no, no, it's bullshit. Crying every night. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so alone. <laughs> and this woman tries to make yeah. me pay for dinner yeah. again. Yeah. And yeah. It's like, oh, I don't even want to have sex with her. I just want her to hug me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, is it in French this year? You yeah, to well, I have applied, so okay. I, I'm still I'm still waiting yeah. to what, see. What time did you uh, go for? I went for, I think, afternoon okay. and evening slots, basically. Yeah. Try and come see your show, man, because yeah. I'm going to be there. Hopefully, this year. hopefully. That's great, man. That, yeah. That'd be good to see that hopefully. perspective, man, because no one, no one really is doing yeah. that. It, it, like you can really like, have fun with it as well because hopefully, you know like, yeah. yeah I want to do like a game show based cool. so I need to apply for that so I'll, hopefully I'll get it done by yeah. Monday it's kind of like would I lie to you basically cool. get two comics to come on stage with myself as a host Every, like obviously the guys who are coming on stage would know beforehand so then I make some statements <laughs> put them in an envelope and then I get to read them out with audience participation what we see on TV in Would I Lie to You I want to call the this game show True Lies based on Arnold Schwarzenegger like, of course that's like, well, that's a quote that's a quote there that's a quote right there behind you a man who's yeah. afraid to be criticised will never be recognised you know? that's, so, yeah. that's great so, nice yeah so essentially the, the comics <laughs> We make the statement yeah. in an envelope, audience participation, yeah. and you know, you make a statement. But I think what we see on TV yeah. most of the time in those game shows is that if you and me are part of a show yeah. and the host is there, I get to ask you the questions mm-hmm. in order to figure out if your statement is true. Yeah. And in this particular show, what I want to do is that I'm going to get the audience to ask the questions in order for you to figure out if the statement is true. Okay. Just so that it's not. All one side is yeah. kind of like you know get just, involved a bit. Yeah, get involved yeah, yeah. a bit. So question, take a question from over here, take a question from yeah. there, so they're still in, in, engaged. Yeah, pretty That's much. Cool, man. You know. it, so you're writing that show, uh, and you're going to do any other festivals this year? I'm doing Leicester, Leicester right. Festival. That's the first one I'm oh, doing. What date you do? I'm doing 18th for February at cool. Brood, and it's going to be three o'clock, and it's. A work in progress in preparation for Edinburgh. Well, cool. the, yeah, the show is called Mayday, Mayday, and cool. it's literally <laughs> Mayday. It's going to show together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mayday, 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 pretty funny. much. Oh, that'd yeah, be great, man. That'd pretty be much. So yeah, I'm just gonna again. It's the same ideas about cool. Edinburgh, but just wanna lay them down and see yeah. if there is any shape or. Yeah. any sense to them what sort of feedback I'm yeah. getting that kind of thing that's cool you know apply for Hastings still waiting oh, yeah, only too. done that late yeah, so I did you got, this year yeah. well. okay. that's cool so I think there's a couple of other festivals out there so I'm gonna try even if it's mm. you know just to get that hour slot yeah, yeah. Uh, just because like the profile that I have right now I'm just not gonna get a room in London or mm. somewhere to do 45 15 yeah. minutes of material to get mm. through, you know, yeah. so it might be worth just, you know, just doing as many places as you can. Yeah. As yeah. much as when I get to Edinburgh. That's it. We'll see, man. That'd be good, we'll man. See. That'd be good. Did you go to a, 
the expo or something like that, like the 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 muscle expo or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the bodybuilding festival. You know no, story? no, no. Andy Story used to be a big bodybuilding yeah. fan. Yeah. yeah. Are you still? So, you still right? Yeah, I still, I still go, man. I yeah. still go. So I'm, um, you know, with the job I'm doing now, I'm even thinking about, you know, maybe sort of going through a training to, you know, turn that into a personal training thing, and then just do that, you know, as a living. Mm. on side with a comedy mm. just because you end up being your own boss you know yeah. you're self-employed and it's good to have other things man freelancing yeah, really helps you know, with this yeah it does like that's an avenue I fall off but again it's just like you know doing my own gig I, I, I procrastinate a lot mm-hmm. you know before I finally decide to do something mm-hmm. I, you know so yeah but yeah I definitely go to the festivals I'm definitely yeah. going this year I'm waiting them to like bring out the tickets right, in cool. Birmingham and yeah right. it's always fun you see so many muscle heads out yeah, there yeah. you get a lot of freebies you oh, know yeah, yeah. yeah they give you goodie bags you know do you like, ride some steer- syringes and shit no, no. <laughs> What I did the first time out though is that I bought a regular ticket and basically right. or you have all these brands that are out there with like the models and sure. sponsor and things like that and you know they just talk you through their exercise routines and oh, you know right. uh, different plans mm. and food and mm. they it just so it's a lot more than just working out okay. because it's health and then you know they right. do like um, a bodybuilding competition as well there's like different games that are squatting right. and you know you can get prizes from one, like all that kind of shit but i think what i like more is just the atmosphere yeah yeah is that everybody's so chilled out and so down to earth yeah. and yeah it's great and the girls are Amazing, right? Yeah, <laughs> what date is that? Uh, they usually do it in March. I haven't okay. been, you know, they haven't yeah. sent out the ticket for this year, so I don't of... know. Well, so, like in the last few years, because the roids have been, uh, like you know, you can't really do this. Yeah, way. if you notice, people get smaller, yeah, is it different? Yeah, is it different now, right? Because I remember when I saw Gladiators, right? Yeah. And they had no rights. Yeah. It was the worst show ever. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? I mean, you see all yeah. these, like, puny people yeah. swing from things, yeah. you know, and, from, yeah. like, place to place. And you're like, now, yeah. like, you know, I wanted to see Rhino, like, with yeah. all the veins. Oh, right, and, yeah. And, you know, right, you know, yeah. He's actually had a stroke. He's yeah. just holding yeah. on. And things. <laughs> you know, he just doesn't yeah. know what's going on anymore, you know? They're not as massive. No, I think a lot of people are talking about size in the bodybuilding world. Sure. and what's going on is the big competition like Olympia and Mr. Universe, Mr. Universe yeah. a, a lot of this marked up by people who value science, you know. Sure. We live in a world now where bigger is better. I mean, you look, you know, and a lot of these comps take place in America where mm. they value size. They have big cars, big houses, you know. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be a muscle guy, you need to be big as well, you know. What's that left is that there is a lot less um, importance and value put on right. muscle definition. Mm-hmm. And the guys that I admire into the bodybuilding world are not necessarily the biggest guys, mm-hmm. but they're the most defined guys. Yeah. You know, when you see them, they're really cut. You can see every uh-huh. piece of muscle, yeah, yeah. very little fat on them. Yeah, right. Those are the guys I like, you know. Mm-hmm. But nowadays you look at Kai Green, you look at Phil Jones, you, you know, all those guys, they're huge. But you look at their belly because of the roids and everything, they don't even have a six pack. Right, right. Yeah. Again, this down to the judges. Yeah. If the judges decide that they're going to put more points to the guys who are yeah. a lot more defined, yeah. where there is a lot more um, uniformity okay. in the body, yeah. then you're going to see that a lot of the bodybuilders are going to look to be shaped like that. Mm-hmm. But where right now it's all about side everybody's just trying to get bigger it doesn't matter Crazy. just get huge it's great you know it's like a, um, it's like an experiment isn't it yeah I mean, it pretty really much, is like, you know, it, it let's see right? how big he yeah, totally you can. know what I mean <laughs> they're just feeding enough roids and yeah, you know yeah. so Crazy. yeah even I mean the talk with roids yes there's I think there's definitely an, an element of roids that's being used in bodybuilding that is more prevalent than any other sports mm. but all of you at sports use roids as well, mm. yeah. but we don't talk about it. Yeah. Like, you know, when you talk to people and all they can talk about is steroids, and it's like, yeah. dude, do you know that footballers get steroid injection just so that they can be fit to play a game? 
because there's different levels of steroids. Uh, right, right, right. You know? Uh -huh. So there's different levels, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you get some steroids that are legal, yeah. you know, and then you get some that are illegal. Right. So uh, let's say in the bodybuilding world, so you would get the legals and illegals one. But because... What are those guys? <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know the names, yeah. No. but yeah, so that's, you know, so a lot of athletes, footballers, um, cyclists, yeah. you know, they get injured, they need to be on the pitch or whatever, you know, yeah. and then, you know, if they can play, uh, it's to manage pain, basically, yeah, yeah. so they get in steroid injection, mm -hmm. just get on the field and get on with it, you I know. Wonder, I wonder what kind of uh, injection we need for comedy. <laughs> uh, you know, we need more than a steroid injection. Uh, right? Adrenaline. We uh, need <laughs> adrenaline injection or something, you know, or Especially, a gas injection, yeah, you know, yeah. just so that we get out there and we see the whole world completely different. Just you know? nitrous oxide, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Was it? Um, uh, yeah, man. Was it, uh, well? Okay, so we come see it the, on the 18th in in Leicester. Leicester. Uh, Brood three o'clock. Brood the three o'clock, and then possibly Hastings and Hastings, Fringe this year yeah, and, Fringe. And, and you've got your own gig the Muddy Waters Muddy Waters where? taking place at the Leighton Technical uh -huh. first Tuesday of every month okay and uh, and where can we find you on Facebook Twitter Facebook right? you can find me on Facebook at Trev to Carby on Twitter at Trev to Carby on Instagram <laughs> at Trev to Carby yeah. yeah this guy is not original in his thinking like alright I'll just take my name and make a stage name out of it and that's it so Muddy Waters Comedy is the same for Facebook, yeah. Twitter, and Instagram. Just Muddy Waters Com or Muddy Waters Comedy. I think yeah. one of them didn't have enough space oh. to do the comedy, so I ended up just being calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So fully synced up, man. That's great. Uh, yeah. Well, Trev, thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me, man. Really awesome. appreciate it. was a lot of fun, and I hope this recording doesn't come back to bite me in the future. <laughs> <laughs> no, blur it up, blur it up. Well, I hope 2018 yeah. is awesome, mate. Nah, awesome. nah, nah, yeah, <laughs> thanks. I hope in 10 years' time, some geeky kid isn't sat down somewhere listening to this and be like, oh, fucking hell, Trev. I didn't know this about you. Now I do. No wonder you're so grumpy on stage. Oh, <laughs> you no. need a woman in your life. <laughs> no. I'm no. yeah, sure it'll work out, man. There's plenty of people out there. There's plenty of people out there. <laughs> All right. and that was episode 59 with a very funny Trev Takabi go find him on Instagram Twitter Facebook YouTube actually go and see him live he's writing his new show called Great Story Bro he's going to be taking that up to the Edinburgh Fringe now you can find this podcast on Twitter we're there at The Comedy Defect you can follow me at Winter Phonander. You can also come see my live stand-up gig dates, which will be on my website. I say Danny Clives is fixing that website, which is winterphonander.com. I'm also raking through that Guinness Encyclopedia, taking out as many jokes as I possibly can, converting them into one-liners, which I will eventually do a show on. And that is on Twitter, under the handle, at Guinness Jokes. So you can come see the show developing there. Oh, it's exciting. You can also donate to this podcast, and you can go to Patreon, just type in The Comedy Defect Podcast, and donate as little or as much as you feel this podcast is worth. And those of you that do donate, thanks. Those that don't donate, just leave us a nice, honest review on iTunes or Podbean, because that really helps. You can, really, you can do it on your phone now. It's really easy. Just, you know, how many ever stars, five, you want to give this podcast, just go for it. Enjoy yourself. Just let yourself go. Uh, that's it for this episode of The Comedy Defect Podcast. This was episode 59 Next month, we've got an Irish comedian, I'm not biased, for episode 60, and that is the very funny Connor Drum. So that's it for this month. We'll see you next month for episode 60. <laughs>